Hi everybody, Jonathan here with another Back to Its tutorial and today we're going to have some fun learning how to model up some tower buildings or skyscrapers and this is something that I like to do once in a while because it's a really great way to practice your skills and learn 3D modeling tools that maybe you wouldn't get the chance to use in your regular workflow as an architect. It's also super good fun and hopefully you'll learn an awful lot about the uh, tools that are a little bit more unusual in Vectorworks that allow you to do some really, really sculptural, really fast 3D modeling. So as ever, if you're new around here, I'd love you to subscribe to the channel. It really helps motivate me to make lots more videos for you. And I've really enjoyed the channel recently. It's been growing really, really well. And I've got some great videos planned for you all. So please like and subscribe. Let's get started with the video and do give me a like if you enjoy. And thanks for watching as ever. So let's get started. As you can see, I've already had a bit of fun modeling up a few different types of skyscrapers in a previous sort of tutorial. And basically these are things that I find really enjoyable to model. Um, I just kind of spikes my creativity. And not only that, it's a really great way to learn some of the new tools. Okay, so to get started on this new one, I've generated a new layer and I'm basically gonna do a polygon with 12 sides. We'll go for about 20 meters. Going to put it into a 3d view and basically we're going to extrude up let's say 150 meters okay so the first 3d modeling tool we're going to try out is the deform tool now this one is a really really cool tool that enables you to basically do lots of deformations including tapering and you can also see that we have a bulge mode so basically i'm going to select the model basically go into the settings and increase the bulge factor let's say to two and what that will do is basically bulge the model out, you can see. So when I change view, you can see we've kind of bulged in one direction. And a really cool thing that we can now do, of course, is use the deform tool to basically deform it and bulge in a little bit more the other direction as well. So the bulge tool just sort of basically makes things wider in the sort of middle section and bulges those forms out. Okay, so next I'm gonna to go to top plan. I'm going to basically uh, copy the form here, paste in place um, and basically then rotate by double clicking the rotate tool and you can see now I've copied that sort of tower form into almost like uh, four sections or a quadrant. Now what we can do is we can select all of those and add, add solids to them to make them into one big solid. Now this means that when we carry on modeling using our other tools we'll be able to kind of model the entire thing. Right, so the next tool I'm going to use is the deform tool again, but this time using the twist mode, I'm going to basically twist it 180 degrees. And this will allow me to create a really dynamic form for this uh, rather interesting skyscraper that I'm kind of coming up with. So you can see it's already taken shape and basically produced quite a kind of dynamic form in 3D for us. So next up, I want to put some floors in. I'm going to use this tool called the Create Contours Floor. Uh, tool and basically put in a five meter floor to floor height and basically you'll notice that that's created lots of different NURBS curves all the way through the model at five meters. So we can't extrude these but we can do a tapered extrude on them. So basically using a zero angle and a one meter extrusion depth I can essentially extrude those up as if they were floors. Let's put them into uh, some sort of texture so I'm going to basically pop out my resource manager Let's just move that across for my other screen and let's type in a concrete and we'll basically search for a concrete material that we can apply. Now you'll also remember that I have my wonderful texture packs available and including the free sample texture pack that you can take advantage of and there's some really nice materials in there including some nice concrete. So if I want to I can basically right click and apply and that will basically apply itself to all of those floors if you like. I think what I'll also do is basically keep them grouped and that means that it'll be a little bit easier to work on my other profiles. In fact, I think it'll be a really good idea if we uh, put those into some classes. So let me just do that for a second by using the select inverse. This is a great little tip. If you can't select the thing you want, you can actually select invert to get everything else. Um, basically, let's create a new class called floors and that will enable me to go into my classes and turn off those floors just for a minute while I'm doing a bit more work on the external shell. So with the shell tool selected, I'm basically gonna go up to the top surface and apply a shell thickness. You can see that I can then post adjust that if I want to. Let's make that a little bit thicker, say 600 mil, 
and you'll notice that even though that's a super complicated shape that duos has hollowed it out with a 600 shell thickness so now i can go into my textures and i can start applying some really cool uh, building shell sort of facade type textures and i've got a couple in here that are semi-transparent and if i basically apply this one and right click and edit you'll notice that within the texture i've got some tra transparency and reflectivity and I can basically adjust that transparency as required to make it a little bit more um, clear, really. So now, when we turn the floors back on, you can see it looks really, really nice. We've got the uh, transparency, and we've got those lovely floors inside the model as well. Okay, so now I want to do a little extraction on this top surface of the tower building to try and kind of create something a bit more interesting. So we're going to convert this surface to curbs. And just so I can see it, I'm going to lift it up, um, say 500 mil, just so I've got, not got the Z fighting there. And I'm going to go into my 3D dragger and basically select a bunch of vertexes that I want to reshape. Now, you can hold shift down, you can select multiple vertexes, and um, you can also do a marquee select, although that can be a bit more tricky. And I'm going to deselect that one that I didn't need. And basically, you'll notice that I can just pull the cage up using my 3D dragger, uh, of all of those points and vertices that were selected before. So that makes a really interesting little top to my funny building. And basically I can shell that as well to give it a nice thick shell for the roof. And we'll apply a nice sort of uh, aluminium type material. Right click and apply that material. So let's actually also drag and drop. I think there was a dialog on my other screen. We can also go into the texture and just really kind of increase things like the scaling or the rotation as required in the render tab. So already within a few minutes, our tower building is looking pretty dynamic. And, you know, hopefully the idea of this video is just to show you how cool Vectorworks is for modeling this kind of building when you know about some of these amazing new tools. So I just want to kind of like model up a bit of a base for the building here. Um, so basically, I'm just using my circle tool and I'm pushing and pulling just to give it a bit of a thickness. We'll just model up a little bit of context for the sort of site so the building's got a bit of a base to sit on. I've dragged on a nice concrete material there and you can see it's already got a little bit of reflectivity in the model as well. So next up, I'm going to basically place a few trees. So Vectorworks actually has a lot of really good 3D trees that you can use, but I am going to use the Render Owl plant and basically select the circle and do duplicate along a path. And let's just try a number of sort of certain distance at the moment and click preview. And you'll notice that basically that will duplicate that tree around the path. Now I did way too many there. Uh, that was only 1800. Let's put in a bigger spacing of say uh, 30 meters or 50 meters maybe. And preview, yeah, that looks a lot better. So you can see it's duplicated our tree around our circle and we'll just remove this extra one. Now we'll move one to the inner ring and I'll do the same thing again, duplicate along a path and I'll just click preview. So very, very quick, command. So now we've got the beginnings of a bit of a site. Um, it's actually generated in slightly the wrong location as you can see, but I'll just drag it down physically to the base of the skyscraper there, down at zero. And you can see these actually trees look pretty nice. Um, if we zoom into them in a bit more detail, you'll see that they're really, really nice little bits of quality. And the great thing is you can actually change the seasons as well. So do check out the VB trees as well as the lobe work plants for these new ones. Okay, so what I'm going to do is basically um, put my site into another layer or class. In fact, let's put it into a class so that I can actually turn it off while I'm working on the rest of the project. So for this bit, I'm going to kind of carry on onto my model and basically go to the light bulb. I'm going to drop in a heliodon just so I can get some nicer uh, shadows. And you can see that the rendering really looks good now with a bit more reflectivity. Now do check your render settings on high and just make sure you've got the ambient occlusion and things like the render settings all tuned up as well. And I can turn my site back on and see how those nice reflections work as well as we're moving around now. So you can see we've only taken about nine minutes so far to create this pretty amazing new concept in high rise living. And it's been a good way to polish up on our tools. So next up, I'm going to go and create some viewports. Now, if you have the designer version, you can actually use a command called create multiple viewports. Um, just before I do that, though, I'm just going to move my heliodon with inside the zone of the model there so that when I create those viewports, um, basically the viewport crop will automatically crop as big as it needs to be. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna create the four primary views and the isometric view. If I wanted to, I could also apply a viewport style, um, but I'm not quite sure which style I want to apply right now. So I'll leave that for now and I'll come back and maybe have a look at that in a minute. So we'll click OK. This is basically going to generate all four views for me using the multiple views. So if you don't have that command because you're on a different version of Actworks, you can do one at a time or you may be able to edit your workspace and add that back in. And it's a great little command that allows you to create multiple viewports in one go as opposed to doing them one by one. So you can see this geometry is now just rendering up. Um, it's quite a big building, quite complex, so it's going to take a few seconds to render, but it should look pretty spectacular once we've got it on the sheet. So now we're on the sheet, I can just rearrange my viewports as I would like and basically just create a nice dynamic presentation. I really love in Vectorworks the way that you separate out the sheet layers and presentation process from the design layers and this is obviously something that Vectorworks is extremely good at. So basically I can rearrange these viewports on a sheet um, and now what I can do is basically zoom in, have a look at the quality. Now when I'm happy I will go in and edit my sheet layer. So edit the sheets and just make sure that you increase the DPI of the raster rendering. Uh, maybe to like 300 dots per inch depending on the size of the image of course and the size of the sheets now watch what happens when it renders up now it should come much better quality because we're rendering at much higher resolution than the default 72 dpi um, it takes a little bit longer of course and basically do bear in mind that every time you double resolution you quadruple render time but that makes a significant difference to all my viewports so basically i can take this one again let's click update and you'll notice that if you were to zoom in, the quality will really improve once you get to 300 dpi. So do render at a lower level of quality, uh, maybe when you're doing your drafting and your previewing and the design development, but once you get to your final renders, crank it up to at least 300 dots per inch, I would recommend. So that one's nearly done. Let's have a little zoom in and see the level of quality that we have now. You can see it looks absolutely amazing. Um, lots and lots of detail from those floors and those textures. And really, you know, quite a simple model, but actually looks pretty interesting, I think, definitely. So if anyone uh, out there would like to uh, commission me to design the next world's tallest skyscraper, I'll be happy to oblige in Vectorworks as it's super good fun. So I'm going to go back to my other five models here. And what I'm going to do now is use a viewport to basically bring in on my design layer my other new tower that I've just created from the current document. So I'm going to go over and select the uh, new live demo layer that I'm showing you. And basically, let's just click OK and bring in the model. We'll move it over to uh, a little bit of space. So we're kind of, you know, nearby those other skyscrapers that I've modeled before. And you can see that this one is way bigger, definitely getting a bit more ambitious in my scale of skyscraper design here. So I'll move this one up to uh, the appropriate height at zero where the others are sat. And we can now see the full sort of le level of skyscrapers leading up to that big one together. So one thing I think you'll note in Vectorworks, which is very, very cool, is here I'm using my walkthrough tool and I'm able to navigate around even what seems like a pretty complicated file in real time. Um, here I just sort of crashed inside. As you can see, there's nothing really inside the sky paper itself. When I'm outside though, things like the reflections, the environmental reflections, and also um, sort of object reflections look pretty good. So I'm really quite pleased with my little design and I do hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you are new around here, as I say, I would love to sort of see you join the channel or reach out to me even better for some bespoke 3D modeling training. It's something I love doing all over the world with clients and I've got clients that I've been working with for many, many years. So I definitely encourage you to do some creative design and sometimes just having a bit of fun, designing something a bit fantastical is what you need to do. You'll also notice with the walkthrough tool in Vectorworks that we do have a gaming mode. So this means I get my traditional gaming keys that basically I can click on and do things like adjust my speed. And now I can kind of walk through with the WASD keys, almost like I'm playing a computer game. And that's a really, really nice sort of way to navigate around the model as well. So I've really enjoyed making this tutorial for you. I think I'll make a few more of these sort of rather quick and sort of rough and ready just tutorials in the future. Um, they don't take too long to make like some of the others and they're really, really good fun just to keep my creative juices flowing and I hope inspire you to give things a go in Vectorworks or whatever modeling software you're using. 
So thanks so much for watching everybody and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.